Today's review is on the Family Guy episode, Teacher's Heavy Pet, that premiered this past Wednesday. The Griffins attended the Adam West High School homecoming football game. Chris wins the homecoming dunce for the fourth time in a row, despite being a sophomore. That's right, Chris is now, what, 15 years old? Lois said that there is nothing to be proud of being the homecoming dunce for the fourth time. Lois felt bad for Chris, so did Stewie and Brian, judging by the sad looks on their faces. Peter thought it was something to be proud of when wearing a four-peat shirt with four purple dunce cone hats on it. Peter calls it a dynasty, like his sports, like a football, basketball, or any other sports team. Lois was pissed at him for that, and rightfully so. Peter... What the hell are you doing? That is nothing to be proud of. Yeah, that may be your retarded way of being proud of your son, but being the homecoming dunce for the fourth time in a row, especially for your son being just a sophomore, that's not a good look. Call it a dynasty my ass, dude. What the hell? Anyways, Lois signs up as a substitute teacher. Chris does not like it due to his unpopularity. And having his mommy at school will make it worse. Luckily, Lois has an idea. She applied as Pewter Schmidt, her maiden name. She also wore a blonde wig and a beauty mark like Marilyn Monroe, Cindy Crawford, Eva Mendes, and Gabriel Mott from the TV show Suits, according to Stewie. Chris was not happy that he ended up going to Bonnie's room. I'm going to Bonnie's room! Lois then said, you mean your room? But then Chris said, no, Bonnie's room. <laughs> Man, the way he said it was just so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> and have you guys noticed that Chris's voice has gotten deeper? You know, his voice is not high pitch as he used to be. Well, he is a teenager, so this is a time for him to be going through puberty where his voice is deep. Chris is growing up, you guys. <laughs> and no wonder people ask if Seth Green is still the voice of Chris. And I'm like, guys, Seth Green is still the voice of Chris. Even despite Chris's voice being deeper, you can still tell that that's Seth Green still voicing Chris. There hasn't been any changes. I guess the people family got asked uh, Seth Green if he could have his voice be deeper. But Chris actually went to Bonnie's room. And so then they show him at Joe and Bonnie's place, and he's watching TV. He chilling the cut <laughs> with Joe watching TV. I'm like, what you doing at Joe and Bonnie's, man? What you doing? Actually doing in Bonnie's room? Are you serious? What are you doing? <laughs> Joe tells Chris that Bonnie visit her mother, and I like how <laughs> man, I was cracking up hearing Chris's deep voice when he said, "Oh, you know, when she and I do this, we." <laughs> Whoever solves the missing puzzle piece to a wheel, they don't have to worry about buying pizza. So then Joe goes, yeah, well, uh, Bonnie's not here. So now you live under my roof, bitch! <laughs> Joe didn't actually say that, but I could imagine him actually saying that to Chris. <laughs> and I can imagine Chris's eyes getting all big as he got caught off guard because he probably didn't expect Joe to be yelling at him. Lois shows up as Mrs. Peter Schmidt as she flips her hair. Chris ends up at the cool kids table. The male teens were wondering why he was acting weird with the teacher. The one kid asked what Chris would do to her if he went back to her place. Chris said they would eat dinner, talk a bit, and then go to bed. Now, of course, these horny, dumbass, cool kids are probably thinking when he meant going to bed, they mean like actually having sex. But no, Chris is actually talking about actually going to bed, like going night-night, get some sleep. After school, Lois picks up Chris and tells him to quickly get in, but the two cool kids saw him and Lois. The next day, the two cool kids told Chris that they saw them, and the blonde cool kid asked Chris if he scored, and he said yes but of course they had dinner they had dinner first according to Chris Chris and his dinner <laughs> Chris love him some dinner big boys gotta eat huh 
So then the cool kids love it. So does the rest of his classmates, including his female classmates. They liked it that he scored as well. <laughs> Chris gets carried out by the cool kids. Chris tells them that he's husky, so be careful. I don't feel supported. <laughs> I was wrong when he said that. So now Chris is popular. He has friends and three female cheerleaders think he's a stud. At night, while having milk and cookies, Meg told Chris that she heard rumors about Chris sleeping with the teacher. And so Chris says that, and so Meg asks Chris that you do realize that uh, Miss Petersmith is still mom, right? I guess she had to ask him that because Chris is a dumb blonde stereotype. So Chris tells Meg that yes, he knows that his mom and he may have told some things to his classmates where they're thinking that they obviously have sex with one another, but it was the only way for him to be happy and be popular. And so Meg told Chris that it can go wrong where Lois could end up going to jail. But Chris says that, hey, mom knew what she was doing when she got the job. And Chris refused to go back to being unpopular. He won't allow it. He demands to have popularity and some friends. So at lunch, the cool kids want to know what Chris and the teacher actually do when it comes to them having sex. First of all, why the hell do you guys want to know so bad? And two, is it really your business to know what kind of sex they do? Like what they actually do? Like, come on. Now it's a lot of pressure on Chris and the cool kids are starting to think that Chris is lying. As they are starting to uh, lose their patience, they're getting pissed off and angry. And so they want proof, which is a naked picture of her. But until then, he can no longer sit with the cool kids. Well, that sucks. So Chris goes sits at a table where three uh, kids are not happy with him. The one female kid is angry with him and so is the other two male kids and one of them is blind. And they all say, well, look who it is if it's not Mr. Popular. Well, look who it is if it's not Mr. Popular. Well, look who it is if it's not Mr. Popular. Poor Chris. And we thought Meg had it bad. Now Chris is definitely has it the worst. Chris goes into the bathroom to take a pic of Lois while she's taking a shower. Chris does not want to do it since he's not a dirtbag. Speaking of dirtbag, Quagmire sh <laughs> comes out of nowhere from the bathroom wall with the whole hiding camouflage. You know how, you know, the soldiers in the army, they do the hiding camouflage so they can hide from their enemies or whatever so they won't get shot. Anyways, yeah, that's what Quagmire was doing. And so he tells Chris that he needs to own it. And then he goes back into the wall where we see nothing but his eyes. Okay, that was a bit creepy. And we thought that old man Herbert the pervert was a creep. Quagmire is taking it to a whole new level. Quagmire, if you don't take your eyes and your camouflage high ass back to the house. Uh, yeah, way to be a role model. Great advice. Sarcasm. Anyways, uh, Chris takes the pic of his own mom. Chris shows the two kids the pic. But before Chris sent it to them, they promised not to share it with anyone else. And so he sent them the pic. But then, his, the rest of his classmates, they get texts in their phone. And you can tell that Chris has a feeling that, <laughs> that they lied. I mean, he looks back and forth, left and right. He, as he's like in his mind going, wait, what, what, what's going on? What the heck? What's up with everybody getting all these, these text messages? <laughs> And Principal John Shepard um, got the pick from his phone as well. Oh boy. So he has a talk with Lois about the pick of her. And she says she will take care of it. Lois angrily goes home to confront Chris. And you know how your parents are frustrated with you? That they'll pretty much confront you and say your full birth name? Well that's what she did. She said his entire birth name. Christopher Cross Griffin. Chris apologized. As he was sorry, even though Lois told him that he's going to have to march to school the very next day and to apologize to everyone. But he was sorry and he just wanted some friends. So Lois understood, she felt bad, and they hugged it out. Aw, isn't that precious? Lois and Chris are hugging. You know, this season has been great where we have seen Lois hug Meg and Meg, Stewie, Brian, and Chris hug each other. 
and now Lois and Chris are hugging each other. And you know, it, it feels like Lois is back to being the old Lois she was in the earlier seasons. Like, Lois is starting to look like a good mom again. Have you guys noticed that so far this season? With with the hugging Meg and hugging Chris? I mean, in these type of moments, Lois thinks Chris's new friends will honor his modesty. But Chris disagrees as she thinks she is brutally naive. Yeah, Lois, you are brutally naive. Like... There's no way that those cool kids who are horny ass male teenagers are going to actually honor his modesty. They're going to see him as a big loser and a liar. Come on, Lois. Anyways, the next day at school, Chris apologized and he told the truth. He hoped that they would forgive him as he just wanted friends. And he was right about Lois being brutally naive. All his classmates were pissed off at him. They were mad as hell, including the female students. Um, one male student coughed and called him a loser. Go a loser! And then another student coughed. I don't know what the hell he said. It was kind of hard to understand what he said. And then the last male student, he just coughed and he mentioned about COVID. He said, hey, cough long COVID. Really? Then what your ass doing in school? Take your ass back in the house. You will not be getting anybody sick. Oh, long COVID, my ass. Take your ass back to the house. What the hell? And so the classmates are just pissed off and mad as hell at Chris. In their minds, they're like, wow, what a big fat loser. This, I can't believe this guy lied saying that he has sex with Mrs. Peter Smith all just to be popular and make friends. Woo, woo, woo. Pathetic. What a loser. No wonder you don't have any friends and you're not popular. Who the heck wants to be around you? Poor Chris. He's sad. And Lois looks at her own son and she feels bad. And she doesn't want to see her son's sad. So she makes him feel better by pretty much lying. And to admit that her and Chris actually have sex. As she smiles and gives him a wink. And Chris appreciated it. Okay, it looks like Lois is back to being a good mom again. Because the flanderized Lois, a uh, not so great mom anymore. I like this. Thank you, family guy. Let's keep it up. Boy, I pass out of Peter as uh, being back to being a, a good dad like he was in the earlier seasons. I doubt it will happen, but I, I pass out if that happened. Chris um, wins in the end. He still is popular. He still has his friends. Although, unfortunately, Lois... Despite lying and she didn't actually have sex with her son, she ends up going to prison for six years. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. Um, I enjoyed some funny moments. I thought that one cutaway gag of Chris's birthday party was funny. Dad, is it almost time for the piñata? Dad? Dad? <laughs> he cried me the way he said it. And then the kids are hitting Peter as a piñata. And actual candy came out of his body, which was freaking weird. So then Peter's like, well, where's my insides? Because I was expecting his intestines to come out. And then apparently they show a piñata driving away. So apparently <laughs> Peter's insides, his intestines are inside the piñata. What the heck? There was uh, the cutaway for Chris where they played that classic song, Good Riddance. Time Your Life by Green Day. That's a classic. Love that song. That's uh, been my review. Uh, you guys tell me your thoughts on the episode. What did you guys think? Did you find it funny? And did you guys feel so bad for Chris being unpopular and not having friends? Because I know that we all can relate to Chris. You know, not making friends in school, being bullied. People see you as losers because you're not popular and judging you and whatnot. It sucks. This has been my review. See you later.